name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome everybody to this morning's sofa service. It's really lovely that we're all gathered together again, wherever you are, whether you're on your sofa, in your bedroom, bathroom, garden, <laughs> kitchen, we welcome you all today. A colic today uh, really sets us once again in the heart of that Easter hope we share, reminding us of how our lives through God's love in Christ, through that true resurrection, can be renewed. So on this glorious day, as we gather in worship, let us pray. Risen Christ, by the lakeside, you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nation to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. So Jane, uh, I know that I've been into uh, the two primary schools in our benefits this week and as lockdown's been easing, so they've been thinking about what it's going to be like for them as they look to open up the schools a little more. I know that in your school, Jane, that's been something that you've been reflecting on. Yes, um, we are obviously as a team looking very hard at how we can welcome more children back as safely as possible, both for them and for us. And I've had an interesting week emotionally, um, have been feeling very positive. School's been a, a wonderfully uh, supportive and encouraging environment to be working in. And um, that positivity left me momentarily on a Friday morning, this Friday, yesterday, when I was driving to work. And uh, I heard a commentary on Radio 4 coming from some of our national papers that was basically saying that teachers are almost using children as a threat to parents and, and being difficult about letting children come back into the school and resenting that our representatives for our professional body were talking to the government and to scientists about how to bring children in safely. And uh, it did really upset me. And it upset me because I know that our profession from the get-go, and certainly the case in my school, and I'm sure up and down the country, yeah, schools, yeah. we have been, um, we're not working in a safe environment. It's really hard to um, get little ones, and I'm in primary, so they are little, to socially distance. We don't have any PPE. Uh, there's no Perspex screens. Um, and yet we are trying every day to, to still uh, teach and be with as many children as we can. We've not taken any holidays. We are looking after the most vulnerable children in our society every day in our schools. And it just made me really sad that um, we could be spoken of in, in yeah. such a negative way. Um, so I came home really yesterday evening quite... Um, quite still feeling that that fire and, and that hurt and um, reflecting on where we go from here. Uh, it's a tricky time for everybody at the moment because all employers and employees, we're trying to find ways of, for all of us to, to get back to work. And um, anyway, in all of that emotion, I picked up the Bible and um, this is what I read. John and I were looking at the readings for today. And this really helped me. And so I'm going to just offer it this morning for all of you, because I think these words at the moment are very relevant for all of us as, as we try and work out the best steps forward. This is from Peter 1. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but sanctify your hearts in Christ as Lord. And those few words just mm. help me mm. to go mm. back mm. into God's peace. Mm. 
mm. and uh, to feel peaceful about the experience I had yesterday. Mm. Mm. Yeah, again, you know, we have to really appreciate the relationship we have uh, as a church with schools, with education. Uh, we also have a particular duty of care, a, a calling maybe to speak on their behalf and to maybe speak truth to power when we feel that what's potentially going to take place really isn't going to bring about what we hold dear, which is that wonderful education and that sense of being part of something which leads them to come to know the love of God in Christ. Well, our Gospel reading today uh, continues in, in the Gospel of John. Uh, once again, we read it in a way that we hope allows us just to pause and to reflect on what we hear, how, again, God's living word is alive to us today. And our Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. So Jane, how did God's living word touch your heart today? Um, there's, a, there's a phrase that came from that reading, I will not leave you orphaned. And I think that's how I felt when I read the passage from Peter, that whatever tumbling emotions we are experiencing, that... Jesus said, I'm still here, and the Holy Spirit is what I'm gifting you. And that interrelational understanding, that promise that if we open our hearts, there's always an answer. And it's, it's very powerful. I will not leave you orphaned mm, for me. Mm, very mm. powerful. Well, again, we're looking ahead to, to uh, Ascension Day this coming week mm. on Thursday, and then a week on from that, we'll have uh, our Pentecost celebrations, a Whit Sunday, the gifting of the Holy Spirit, the birthday of the church. Last week, we again heard of the Spirit being prepared and, and, and ready to come among us. Again, today, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit, whom he calls the Spirit of Truth. This is a Spirit who reveals to me and to you, the truth of who we really are. We are children of God. But more than that, 
we are those with whom God lives. We hold in ourselves, you and I, that divine spark. Now that may sound hugely far-fetched, but I think it's very significant. How would we feel about ourselves if we lived in an awareness of that indwelling God, that divine spark within us? Moreover, how would we live if that indwelling divine spark was something, even if we can't tell it's there, we believe it to be there in other people? How would it ref reflect on, on our relationships? And ultimately, of course, how would it affect that most important relationship, the one we have with God, knowing as we heard in our collect, that the fire of his love is being kindled within each and every one of us. But how to kindle that love? Well, we heard in the gospel that if you love me, you will obey my commandments. We began our service today with that wonderful piece of music by Thomas Tallis. I heard this week of the story of a vicar and he um, decided that he didn't have as much to do as he would normally have to do and so he thought well um, I'll see if I can help out at my local hospital. He was in central London so he called them and they directed him to the chaplaincy and the chaplain said well yeah I suppose we could do with a, an extra pair of hands uh, an extra pair of listening ears. It's tough though at the moment. We're right in the crisis of coronavirus and sometimes it's just going to be you and someone with that virus who's maybe very close to the point of death. Well he said no it's okay that's I think where I need to be and so he went in and he was given the full PPE and he made himself available to any who wanted prayer or just someone to sit by them as they came to the end of their lives. Well, that vicar was our Archbishop, Justin Welby. And it's an amazing story of love mm. and the power of love. Now, it's not for all of us to have that calling or to have, if you will, that opportunity to live out that love in that amazing way. But it doesn't mean that we ourselves can't also love God by doing what God loves us to do. And what God loves us to do is love others. Remember that passage early on in the story of of Jesus where one of the scribes comes to him and says so what are the really important commandments and Jesus says love God and love your neighbor well whenever we are loving our neighbor we are loving God it's a win-win situation and we can't love God without that being realized manifested in loving our neighbor but remember that love is within us and is within the one we love. So we connect that love together. And when we do that, amazing things, wonderful transformations, true resurrections can take place. When Jesus spoke to his disciples in the passage we heard, you know, there was no room for doubt. They were hearing this most special man, the man who was beginning to change their lives from top to bottom, inside out, was going to lead them. And he said, you're going to feel like an orphan. That's a very telling phrase to use. Because, of course, the orphan is the child at their most vulnerable and at their most needy. As Christians, we have a particular calling to follow 
in the way of Jesus Christ, to walk in his ways and to be like him. He loved children and he had a particular concern for all those who were being made vulnerable. As Jane said today, we had a situation where, and we don't quite know what the outcomes will be, where there may be those who are made unnecessarily vulnerable, put at risk. Well, that shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen if we live out of that love, of that regard. We have a duty of care and a, and a special duty of care to those who are needy, those who are vulnerable. And at this time of coronavirus, that becomes real in making sure there is appropriate social distancing. There are measures in place. And when we hear national newspapers rubbishing a profession who have been at the front line, have been alongside other key workers in transport, in our supermarkets, and of course, yes, in our hospitals and our care homes, have been those who have sought to make it possible for those children who are especially vulnerable to be safe. Well, we need to search our hearts and we need to speak about those attitudes which are in themselves death dealing. And look, I'm going to say something now and not apologise for it. If you're reading that newspaper, do God a favour, put it in the bin. Because we're bigger than that. And we need to be filling our lives with those stories, those expressions of how to live in that love just like I shared about Justin Welby. We give thanks for his leadership of our church, for his witness of that love, and we pray that along with him, growing an awareness of the love that God has placed within each and every one of us, we may be agents of that transforming and life-giving love. Amen. Amen. Jane, would you like to lead us in prayer? Yeah. Let's prepare ourselves to pray together. I'm going to just take a moment to become still. And to invite the Holy Spirit to come to us as we pray in silence. I ask the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and to fill us with his presence. We pray for every employer, every employee, Every self-employed person throughout the world. We pray for everybody's safety. We give thanks this morning for Justin Welby, for the leadership and courage he has shown us. And we give thanks for his humility. And we pray that we could walk the way as he has shown us by his example this week. We pray for our schools, for all who are workers within education. We pray for parents. We pray especially for the children. We pray for their comfort and their reassurance. 
as we work together to find ways to bring them back into the schools. We give thanks for our community here on the peninsula, for all who are helping, comforting and praying for those around us. We call to mind all those known to us personally who are sick. We pray for those who are grieving. And we raise up to you, Lord, those who have died. As we join together now, in the prayer that Jesus has gifted to us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So as I said, uh, this coming week uh, uh, marks Ascension. Um, and... We have this week uh, something really very special, a virtual 24-7 uh, prayer initiative. And you can find details of that on the description uh, of this uh, service on YouTube. And I think there's still some spaces left up for people to sign up for and to join in 24-7 Prayer. Very I think exciting. that includes us actually, doesn't it? Well, we haven't done it yet, but <laughs> we we're always kind of the last ones. And if yes. you're the last ones, you always you always get the we're coming the, the, the tough hours. You know, <laughs> we will be the, there. The early morning slots. Um, and also for Pentecost, we're uh, looking to do something very bold. Uh, so there'll be a sofa service, but we're thinking, hoping and praying, uh, that we're going to zoom it. Now we've had some. Uh, really big numbers uh, viewing the sofa services. Maybe they're going down a little bit now. We, we think that out there in YouTube world, there are logarithms that kind of make your figures look better when you start. Whatever is happening out there, we just love the fact that we can do it. And whoever watches it, we thank God for that, uh, that time to share together in prayer and praise. Um, but um, we're, we're going to do it uh, via, via Zoom. So, so look out for a link we're going to be putting out to a Zoom service at 10 o'clock on Pentecost Sunday. That's not next Sunday, but it's a Sunday. Yeah, say, say your prayers for the technology on that one. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting, but yeah. uh, we reckon we'll put it off and it will be fab if we got three people. If mm -hmm. we got 30, great. If we get 300, then even better. Um, it'll just be a joyful way in which we can celebrate what we've spoken of today which is that indwelling love through the Holy Spirit that through Jesus Christ, God has given to each and every person. So I think we're almost at the point where we're going to have our last song. Are we going to do the blessing first? Uh, we'll, like just, we'll, we'll, we'll share the grace. We might, we'll do, we the might grace. do a, a blessing on, on yeah. Pentecost. But it is really important, I think, that we, we treasure... Um, you know, sharing in, in the grace. Uh, uh, it's such a wonderful way to affirm that we are all caught up in that divine relationship of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit, whom we look forward to welcoming again into our lives in these coming weeks. So if you can, hold someone's hand. Um, if you can't, we reach out our hand to you in love uh, and we remember that we are together in that love through the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit as we say together the words of the cross. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with, with us all, all evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen. This wonderful last song is called Faithful One and the words speak of God always being with us, God carrying us, of his Holy Spirit and his presence. And there's a line in it just says, I reach out to you again and again. And as we reach out this week, let's all remember that he's there, just waiting for us.
My Lord.